What's up guys? So following on from my last autopilot video, this time we're going to be doing another autopilot challenge where we travel from Chile to Killarney. Unlike last time, we're going to go a little easier on autopilot and we'll be driving mainly on national roads with less severe bends and more space for autopilot to drive without requiring as much manual intervention. So let's get started. So we're going to be driving from the train station in Tralee to the train station in Killarney. So we'll see how well autopilot can handle a variety of different situations, including driving for a small while in the town in Tralee and also in Killarney. So right now we're just pulling out of the train station in Tralee and we're going to drive out onto one of the main streets. And as soon as I get onto the road, I'm going to engage autopilot and we'll be able to see how well it performs. So now as soon as I'm onto the road, we see the little steering wheel pop up and now autopilot is engaged. So I know that shortly up here, there's a roundabout coming up. So you'll be able to see how autopilot handles that. Now at the moment, we know that autopilot isn't designed to handle roundabouts, but in some situations it does make an attempt um, but a lot of the times you just have to disengage the system because it doesn't slow down enough to navigate around it and it also doesn't enter in the right lane. So here we can see that it wasn't slowing down at all so I had to completely disengage it and take back manual control to go around the roundabout and then to take the exit. So at the moment autopilot basically just treats roundabouts like a sharp enough bend and it just tries to navigate around it but it doesn't take any exits off roundabouts or anything like that because it just doesn't know how to deal with them. And here we're coming up to a small miniature roundabout. So I've engaged autopilot and it literally just kind of drove over the roundabout. <laughs> it pretended as though it wasn't even there. And then again here I need to turn left and autopilot wasn't turning left it was just going to continue with the bend on the roundabout and basically try to go straight through it so again here we're coming up to another roundabout and autopilot is going into the roundabout but it's not actually taking any exit on the roundabout so you can try to get autopilot to do it but it might be able to go onto the roundabout and it might be able to kind of turn around the roundabout but it certainly won't take any exits off the roundabout for you. So now we're on the N22 which is a good national road and autopilot is in full control of the steering, the braking and the acceleration. So from here on out I think autopilot should be able to handle the entire trip to Killarney without me needing to intervene at any stage unless of course I have to overtake a vehicle in front or anything like that but aside from that autopilot should maintain full control of the car and you'll know if I need to take back control because I'll actually properly grab the steering wheel and you'll notice that the blue indicator the blue steering wheel indicator on the touch screen that will go off and also the blue lane markings on either side of the car they will also go off if I take control back from autopilot but as long as you see these blue indicators here and here then you know that autopilot is in control of the car
So here I can see that we're coming into a speed limit that's a lot slower than the current speed limit. It's a 60 km an hour speed limit. So I'm asking autopilot to slow down the car before entering the new speed limit because autopilot won't automatically adjust your speed until you've actually already entered the new speed limit zone. So you'll actually be driving above the speed limit for the first couple of seconds and that isn't exactly good in case you have a speed camera or something like that that's located just after entering a new speed limit area. So you can see when we enter into a higher speed limit zone, it doesn't automatically increase the speed. It's still traveling at the 50 kilometers an hour that speed limit that we set previously. And now that we've entered the 100 kilometer an hour zone, it updates the speed limit icon here, but it doesn't actually change autopilot speed limit until you touch the speed limit icon on the touch screen, and then autopilot will speed itself up. So you can see these bends here now are pretty sharp for a road with a 100 km an hour speed limit and autopilot is certainly taking them with some level of aggression but it was able to take them without issue. I didn't get any warnings. So this is where the road trip will get a little more interesting because the road is a bit narrower than it was before and it's definitely a lot more bendy than it was before. So we should get a better sense of how autopilot handles roads like this when it's traveling at such a high speed. So you can see there now that it did give me the warning that it was having difficulty steering around the turn, but it did do it. I didn't have any intervention. As you can see, my hands were just resting at the bottom of the wheel. But it does take these turns with a lot more aggression than you might expect. Again, now here we're coming into this bend quite rapidly and autopilot is taking the bend very quickly. But again, it was able to do it without a problem. Again, here now we're coming into another pretty sharp bend and autopilot is driving very quickly, but it did take it without a problem. So this is something Tesla definitely need to work on because it's not slowing down enough for these bends, even though those bends did have the yellow and black markings on them to indicate that they are severe bends, autopilot wasn't applying enough speed reduction before entering the bend to kind of take it safely. So it's definitely taking the bends a lot more quickly than I would if I were driving myself. So now we're coming into the town. You could see that was quite an ordeal towards the end of the journey. We got tons of very sharp bends and autopilot was traveling very quickly on all of them, but it did manage to take them without traversing over any of the lane markings. Now here again, we're coming into a roundabout and autopilot isn't slowing down at all. So I have to take back manual control and then take the turn off myself and then I can re-engage autopilot. So you can see on this road, there's no lane markings on the left at the moment and autopilot is handling that perfectly fine. And now we've come onto a better section of road where the lane markings are more clear and autopilot isn't having any issues. It'll be interesting now to see how it handles this roundabout since it's a bit smaller than before, but I don't think I'm going to be comfortable enough to let it do it. No, I had, to, I had to take back control at the last second because it did feel like it was going to go into the, the side barrier there. But it, it did do a better job that time. As you can see, if, if it just involves 
a small roundabout and you're going straight through the roundabout, then autopilot might be able to do it for you. But again, it's very risky and it's definitely not something that it's currently designed for. So I wouldn't risk it. And we're coming up to another roundabout where we have to take the right turn. So I have to take back manual control once more. Go around the roundabout. And then here we're going to be taking a left turn. So I'll just take a left turn here. And now we have arrived at the train station. So one last thing I could try is maybe the auto park. So we'll try auto park here and see if it can park in this parking space. Will it come up? It will. So I stop the car, click it into reverse and click start. And now it says auto park is engaged. So you can see all the cameras here. The, these were added in a recent enough update. So it's easier to see what's around the car when it's parking. So this is a very tight space. If I were driving myself, I certainly wouldn't be parking in a space that's this tight. But I just wanted to see for the purposes of the video, whether or not auto park would be able to park in it properly. So you can see it's taking it quite slowly, but it's doing a very good job. And now it's reversing very slowly. And there we go, it's parked. So there's not enough room for me to get out on either side, but Autopilot did a very good job and that's it. So that's it for today's video. We handled quite a lot of roundabouts and we drove on a national road that involved quite a lot of bends towards the end section where we were approaching Killarney. We saw that autopilot doesn't slow down enough when it's entering sharp bends and in a lot of cases it was travelling at the 100 km an hour speed limit until it entered the bend and then it decided to brake really harshly in order to take the bend in a safe manner. So that's something that definitely needs to be updated in a future autopilot software update. And then once we arrived in Killarney, we saw that Autopilot wasn't able to handle any roundabouts. So that's something we're going to be looking for in another future update where Autopilot can handle roundabouts without any manual intervention. And then at the very last part of the video, we came into a car park and we saw just how Autopilot auto park system was able to work and it parked very well. Auto park is definitely something that's a bit more mature in terms of the autopilot suite and in this case it was able to park in a very tight parking space that I myself would not have been able to park in because my parking skills are definitely not as good as autopilots. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one.